In the original budget for the financial year 2023-2024, the NGCDF was allocated a total of 53.53 billion. At the supplementary estimate one, a further Kenya shillings 4.4 billion was allocated to the fund, of which 3.4 billion was set aside for the 290 constituencies as a conditional grant towards construction of classrooms and integrated learning centers with junior secular schools. The amount allocated to each of the 290 constituencies was determined on the basis of grade seven uh, enrollment and the balance of one billion was additional allocation to 17 constituencies in Nairobi for the school infrastructure development. This therefore gives a total budget allocation of 57.93 billion for the financial year 2023-2024, the current one that we are going through. But the, despite the tough economic conditions, and I, and, uh, I, I appreciate uh, Honorable Musa Sirma's uh, remarks, the country is facing very severe conditions, but the National Treasury has managed to disburse 40 billion to date, and it is committed to disburse the remaining amount before the end of the financial year. <laughs> Your Excellency, as I conclude, I wish to applaud the dedication and hard work of those who have been involved in the administration and implementation of the fund over the years. Your commitment to service, uh, to service delivery, and your firm belief in the power of grassroots de development has been the driving force behind the fund's success. I would like to express my gratitude to the board of directors of NGCDF, management and staff of NGCDF, the constituency, NCDF committees, and even project management com committees for their unwavering support in ensuring the NGCDF achieves its vision as was demonstrated by just a few cases of uh, what the, His Excellency was introduced to. Your Excellency, my office continued to provide all the necessary support and guidance to ensure the NGCDF achieves its objectives. And so, with this, I invite you all to join us in this, celebrating these significant milestones in the country, in the country's development, and I'm sure it is going to be very, very important for us all. In the year 2004, the Kenya government took the bold step towards decentralizing of government resources at the national level and empowerment of citizens on the ground by establishing the Consistency Development Fund. This visionary and constructive initiative was aimed at bringing the development closer to the grassroots and while also ensuring that each and every constituency in the country had the resources and opportunities to flourish. The NGCDF objective therefore resonates very well with the government's bottom-up economic transformation agenda that recognizes that most Kenyans have been left behind and so it, a time has come to develop a framework of fostering sustainable inclusive growth and economic transformation. This requires a new policy reform space, a set of interventions, and a new development paradigm for us to succeed. The NCDF is, has been and will therefore continue to be a major contributor to this development paradigm in the country and is therefore a source of pride for us all. As Kenya grapples to mitigate against the negative global and persistent shocks, that have actually affected us and they continue to, def uh, to affect us, the N NGCDF remains a critical factor in the country's mitigation at the levels of, of the consistency level and even investment in adaptation. And this will help to mitigate against these negative economic shocks and reduce the effects. The other negative side of this persistent and negative shock is to reduce our resource base such that we lose the flexibility due to limited fiscal space as we shift resources to save lives, for example, the current, uh, the current floods. Before that, it was El Nino. Before that, there was a severe drought. But we also recognize that there are notable initiatives that have been uh, implemented by the Constituency Development Fund.
They include the construction and rehabilitation of classrooms and dormitories, establishment of new Kenya medical training colleges, campuses across the country, and infrastructure improvement in pre-existing areas of campuses. For us, it is quite critical that we appreciate all these efforts that have been made, and we do believe that the fund has been used in the acquisition of even school buses, as we have seen the numbers in the presentation that we have seen, awarding of bursaries to needy students, and we have seen that, and the financing of health insurance premiums for vulnerable groups. Your Excellency, the government's acknowledgement of this impactful work carried out through the NGCDF can be reflected by its commitment to fortify the fund through revisions to the resource allocation. Your Excellency, you and I, and perhaps one or two members here, were in Parliament before CDF and after CDF. And we clearly appreciate and understand the value and impact of CDF. In biblical terms, we could say we came in in BC and lived through AD. <laughs> CDF has done a wonderful job countrywide. If you, in comparative terms, Your Excellency, and this is not in any way demeaning what our great governors do, in many jurisdictions, you are likely to see a lot more visible CDF work than devolution work. And I want to encourage members of parliament to be committed to the management of this fund because before CDF, for those of us who were there earlier, being a member of parliament was a nightmare. Everybody looked at you to do what has been recounted here. And when CDF came, it mitigated many of our issues. I've been telling Kimani Chungo, our majority leader, that you must never waste a minute in defending CDF anywhere and everywhere where it is assaulted. The challenges we have been facing with CDF, Your Excellency, is as usual, the litigious Kenyans, the vexatious litigants, who at every twist and turn must go to court to challenge anything that comes our way. But we have been surmounting it, and I want to assure members of parliament that His Excellency is committed to CDF, and CDF is here to stay, <laughs> and to grow and grow and grow that we have now expanded it to ICT, to environment, and the sky is the limit. The law is in your hands. You need to change CDF to meet any other requirements in society we will facilitate you. Let me end here, Your Excellency, by urging all Kenyans that the country is now being ravaged by floods. Let's be each other's keeper, and as we go to the future, Your Excellency, we must now challenge our planners to ensure that we don't allow Kenyans, wherever they are, whoever they are, to construct dwelling houses and building houses in water-prone paths. Because when water comes, it is more ferocious than fire. On that note, you excellent. have just been elected, and before us and my small team, we are discussing, for example, 104 primary schools. Three quarters of them have issues. And 20, 30 of them, what I'm calling issues, were real serious issues. When you enter Shule, some place you find there are 400 uh, pupils, and there is no toilets, there are no latrines. And they don't know what to do. When I'm mapping in my local constituency, other people, other members are also doing the same. In parliament at that time, Your Excellency, as you know, we used to have this question time where members of parliament 
as I have mentioned, like me and others, you are able to ask questions to the ministers. They were members of parliament at that time, so it was probably a bit easier. And uh, uh, the kind of questions we'd be asking, we want, for example, a bridge down somewhere Kwetu, and uh, maybe you want grassrooms or something. And the answer, like I remember one time I wanted health centers. We had nine wards. We have only one uh, dispensary health center. We want other nine. And when I asked the Minister for Health when they can build for us, the realistically, the Minister realistically says what the MMP is asking for will be done by the government to be built, equipped, and staffed, and fully operationalized when funds become available. <laughs> when I'm bothering about my nine health centers, another member, Analia Kwao, Sababu Anaishi Hapa, Soko Nashure Iko Ngambo Ile, Nakuna Kamuto Hapa. What they need is just a very small bridge, maybe a caravan. Lakini akiuliza when it can be done, when funds become available. So, myself and presumably others, kukakua na hiyo kibaru wa kidogo, kufikria VP, can funds become available within the architecture, <laughs> within the architecture of our national revenue and the, the budgetary system and within what can be available within the legislative possibilities. What can be done to make funds available for these small things? And we are serious. We are talking small things. Watoto hawana shule, hawana choo. Upepo ilikuja ikabeba in the roof. What do you do? It was a really tough job being a member of parliament that time. That is what now brought that initial motion where my motion was asking the government to, 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 to kind of ring fence 5% of the national income, the revenue, to be devoted to those grassroots projects, the constituencies, the constituency based project. We went on, it went on now to craft the bill itself, the constituency development fund, those days, Your Excellency, as you know, things were taking a bit long. The motion itself takes a whole year, the bill one and a half years. It was not until uh, April uh, uh, 2004 when the structures were in. The first funds, I remember, was only six million per constituency, and the Mweshimu Arise, that was in May, June 2004. And I believe Mweshimu Arise, when we are celebrating in Olkarao, we have our six million at a queen. Yeah, I'll do it north. Ata nyimuka celebrate you. Na tukafurai sana because it was the first time mtoto anaweza kukuliria ameyaliko kweda alliance. Kwa o hawa na kukuwasha ngombe. What do you do? So, Your Excellency, because I've only a few moments, as we say, the rest is history. Your Excellency, the fund has grown exponentially over the last 20 years from an initial allocation of 1.2 billion in 2003-2004 financial year, growing to 57.9 billion now, resulting in a cumulative total of 522 billion over the years. The board has developed a unique model under the act where NGCDF committees in the constituencies engage in robust public participation to identify key development priorities in each constituency. Then the board disburses funds to these committees, and the committees disburse the same to individual PMU, project management committees, for implementation. Your Excellency, this model has made the board run one of the most cost-effective funds in our country. This is because of the men and women in the NGCDF committees in the constituencies and the PMCs who tirelessly toil to ensure prudent expenditure of public funds. Your Excellency, these men and women are here with you in this function today. Their current sitting allowances were fixed 20 years ago at the inception of the... <laughs> Your Excellency, currently we dedicate about 1.5 billion annually towards our bursary scheme to benefit approximately 1.2 million needy students. 
Our partnership with the Ministry of Education consumes about 78% of all the funds that we receive from the Exchequer. The fund has facilitated the establishment of 3,087 new primary and secondary schools, including 16 new schools for students with special needs. These have gone a long way in supporting the government's policy of access to free primary and secondary education. In support of Title Education, Your Excellency, in partnership with the Ministry of Health and the Board of the Kenya Medical Training Colleges, the fund established 16 new KMT campuses in the country. Our partnership with the Ministry of Interior has seen the fund in coordination with the National Police Service and the National Government Administration put up police posts, police stations, sub-county police headquarters, assistant chiefs officers, chiefs officers, assistant county commissioners and deputy county commissioners officers all over the country. These are broad services closer to the citizens and help in creating secure environments for residences and businesses. With the latest amendments in December 2023, Your Excellency, the fund is now collaborating with the Ministry of Environment on the implementation of projects that mitigate climate change. The board has already held consultative meetings with the ministry with a view to ensuring that the ministry's officials are assigned to all our 290 constituencies in, in the country so that climate change mitigation activities are grounded at the grassroots in each of these constituencies. The fund is also collaborating with the Ministry of ICT and Digital Economy in the construction and, sustain and sustainability of ICT hubs. I'm glad to report, Your Excellency, that the Ministry of ICT and Digital Economy has now forwarded to the board guidelines that will ensure prudent and expeditious use of funds in the setting up of new ICT hubs. And Your Excellency, allow me now as I close to quote you once more. On the 22nd of September 2022, in the media, I quote, having been in parliament for 15 years, before and after the establishment of NGCDF, I know that the difference it makes is monumental. I believe there's a way NGCDF can be aligned to the tenets of the constitution, close quote. Your Excellency, I wish to thank members of the National Assembly for the responsibility and coordination that we have had through NASC, and I hope that as we look forward over the coming years, this will be filled with even greater achievements and progress, not just for your government, but also for the National Government Constituency Development Fund. Your Excellency, I wish to thank you. Your Excellency, allow me. Your Excellency, uh, we want to thank you as the President of the Republic of Kenya because of your commitment in supporting uh, CDF in this country. Uh, the CS made a promise, Your Excellency, and I know it's a promise from you, that we are going to get our money by the end of the year, that was last year, and we got it in full, including what had not been paid by the former administration, 4.9 billion. <laughs> Despite the fact that you, made, you found the empty coffers, Your Excellency, you managed to get that money to us. Your Excellency, in this year, this financial year, we are on course as per your promise. And Your Excellency, we got the last tranche some few days, three days ago, which was for April. And you made a promise that we're going to get it every month. And you have made a promise. Your Excellency, the President, these members are very happy. And they are saying that may God give you that energy to protect us and make this country better than what it is. Your Excellency, again, I know you are going to, uh, possibly if you, uh, there is a lot of floods in the country. It may even overwhelm the amount of uh, money we have as members of parliament in terms of repairing the infrastructure which will have been destroyed by the floods. Your Excellency, as you make your budget on this emergency, think about our rural areas and the schools which have been damaged so that because they are not in the budget which we have already submitted to the board and we do not want to break the promises we have made to people. 
consider us in your emergencies uh, where you can, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, you know there are very many toilets which have sunk. There are many areas which have been swept away. Your Excellency, uh, I also want to reiterate that with the amendment of 2023 Act of NGCDF, the key and the pillars under which we want to run this is the ICT hubs, Your Excellency, which is your flagship project. And we want to say we are supportive of that, and I can assure you, Your Excellency, these members are supportive. 